you know, I, I like the figure. I think it's pretty cool, but uh, how is he supposed to use his arms again? What's up, guys? And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series Core Class Bumblebee movie concept art, Rumble. Now, Rumble, as a character, did not appear in the Bumblebee movie at all. However, there was some concept art floating around for this guy. However, some speculate that that concept art was made last minute so Hasbro could sell this toy. What do I think about that? I don't know. The figure works best as its own thing, but doesn't really fit into the live action category. And this feels a little bit too G1-ish for concept art anyways, because at least with concept art Megatron, it looked as if he was meant to be in the Bumblebee movie, whereas this guy not so much. Same thing with Sunstreaker. Although I would like to check out Sunstreaker. But anyways, before we look at the figure, let's take a quick look at his packaging. Now looking at the box is just the same as any normal core class box. Except of course the logo, the name of the character, and the artwork is different. Apparently this is what Rumble looks like in concept art. Looks wonky. On the side over here it's a little bit different. There's half of the body and then half of the hollow body. I wonder if this is referencing the scan series. I don't know. But anyways, this is how you can tell which ones are the concept when there's half the body, half the hollow. And some people speculate that this is a subline. I don't really consider it a subline as at least for concept art Megatron, which does have this sort of uh, artwork on the side of his box, is still numbered as 109 in the mainline Studio Series movie characters. On the other side is a more zoomed in uh, look at Rumble, and on the bottom is all boring. On the top is a nice little logo of Transformers Bumblebee, and on the bottom back is all boring, but on the top you get a little bit more view of what you get inside the box. But anyways, looking back on the painting and sculpting on this figure, it's decent. It looks like it could fit alongside the Gamer Edition War for Cybertron figures, but the head sculpt is nice. Looks just like Rumble in G1. And of course, no alternate mode kibble, especially on the back. However, there is a lot of hollow gaps here and there. Two of which being for weapon storage. To be quite honest, there's not much to talk about this figure as it does hold quite a unique look to it. And to be honest, it doesn't really stand out. His arms look pretty cool. However, there's like little to no articulation as the only thing he can do is just bend it in a very, very wonky way as that is supposed to be used for transformation anyways. However, if you were to smack a human down with this, he would most likely kill that person. Anyways, let's get down to accessories, which are not compatible to this guy at all because his arms are pretty garbage, but the accessories do fit on other core classes' hands. Like, for example, Mohawk. It almost looks as if these weapons were supposed to go alongside with Mohawk, as they do share the same color scheme for the mold. Which makes you wonder. I just realized this now. Perhaps these accessories were meant for Mohawk. What you can also do is you can plug the two guns together so you get a bigger gun, which I think is pretty cool. Since there was a port halfway through the gun, you could also plug in the other hand, so that way Mohawk is holding the gun with both hands, which looks much better. This shotgun-like blaster is definitely far superior to his knife, in which, let's be honest, this knife would not get him anywhere. However, there is also a bigger peg on the holster, so you could fit this onto any figure's hand that has a 5mm port. For example, Soundwave, he could be walking around with this pistol, However, he doesn't need it as he does have this nice little blaster, let alone the shoulder cannon. For weapon storage, you turn to the back of Rumble's back, of course, and you can plug in the two blasters right here. Now, it almost looks as if these uh, weapons on the back are used as uh, back missile launchers for Rumble. Kind of cool, I guess. Now, anyways, moving on to articulation, ball joint at the the head which allows the head to move up and down and to swivel shoulder is on a hinge joint which allows the shoulder to move outwards like so shoulder can also rotate and if you want these two hinge joints can count as articulation ab crunch on a core class figure that's new legs can spread leg can move forward can also move backwards ball joint at the knee which allows a bend and a swivel and the toe is used for transformation but it allows for an unintentional up and down articulation joint with that articulation integrated onto the figure's feet it can allow for some posabilities like this or if you want you can have them posed 
like this. With the articulation out of the way, we can quickly move on to size comparison. Starting off with Core Class Mohawk, and no, your eyes do not deceive you, these are both Core Class figures, which costs $10 each. Ravage, Core Class Shockwave, to throw in some Rise of the Beasts characters, here he is next to Noah. RC, Novocaine, B127, so far the latest Seeker Thundercracker, SS102 Optimus, and lastly Studio Series Voyager Class Soundwave. So that pretty much concludes the size comparison. Yeah, this guy's pretty small. He's half the size of a normal core class figure. He's not the only one. And there is going to be a Frenzy repaint of this figure, which I'm a little excited about. I wouldn't mind having a third companion for this figure, as well as an extra pair of blasters. Oh, and I am under the impression that there is also going to be a core class Starscream, which should be about the size of Shockwave. Speaking of Core Class Shockwave, they're going to make a Voyager Class Shockwave. Very excited for that. As well as a Skywarp repaint of Thundercracker. But that's enough of what's to come in the future for more Bumblebee movie figures. Let's talk about this figure's uh, transformation. Which is simple and straightforward. What I recommend you do first is remove the weapons if you haven't already. Untab this. Untab this. Fold it all in. Rotate the arm like this so you could have the Decepticon symbol facing the camera. And just close it in. And then you repeat the same process for the other side. Next, fold in the front feet, and then what I recommend you do is we pause to plug in the weapons onto these ports right here. There is a slot right here on both sides of the corner of the gun. What you're going to do is plug it onto that tab right there, like so. And for the secondary gun, it's a little bit different as the tab and slot is a more of a rectangular shape, but nonetheless, it tabs in fairly well. Once you have something looking like this, you want to tab in that. Okay, tab it in with the other side. Next, what you're going to do is move the crotch piece up forward, and then you can crunch the ab, and then have this close in. And there you go. This is the alternate mode for Rumble. Another cassette box. Except this time around, the cassette box looks more like a drop pod or a skate pod. More so a smaller replica of what I'm assuming a Decepticon cruiser would look like in the movies. The painting and sculpting looks as if that were the case. Anyways, here's a comparison between him and Laserbeak's cassette mode. And here he is alongside his wave mate, Mohawk. Now we turn to Soundwave and we could initiate his little uh, mechanism where you can stuff a uh, cassette tape onto Soundwave's chest, like so. I recommend doing it like in this angle. Okay, I messed up. One thing I almost forgot to mention with the cassette is that there is this slot right here, which will peg into that tab right there, but for some reason they have a hard time trying to plug in together. Like, there's no click, you don't hear a click, no nothing. It's almost as if they weren't meant to tab in. But anyways, you're supposed to plug in this figure onto Soundwave's chest, and then close in Soundwave's chest. And there you go. Totally nothing else. But anyways, you gotta push this down, and to remove it, you just shake the thing off. Also, this is something I didn't point out when I was reviewing this figure, like, two years ago. But where is Soundwave Spark? How does he breathe? How does he walk? How does he think? Gee, him and Shockwave are, like, absolutely soulless. I think we need more of that when we see these guys later on in live action. Well, anyways, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all I had to say for this guy. Overall, he's okay, but the only reason I see to get this figure is to add a little bit more cassette-ish. Or, if you want an extra accessory. But other than that, I see no reason to get this figure. Hopefully Sunstreaker is a little bit better. But of course, the concept character that I'm looking forward to this year has to go for the Bumblebee movie Megatron. But that's a story for another time for another review. So anyways, if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button. Be sure to share this with your friends as well. Be sure to turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another video. And most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya!